we've reached that time of year where it's feeling fallish, but it's not quite fall. But I'm feeling folly, but I haven't put up decor yet. So I, I don't really know how to feel. Welcome back, Cupcakes, or welcome to my channel if this is your first video. Um, I cannot believe it is September. August flew by, and if you didn't know, I am a high school teacher and cheer coach, so August was absolutely just booming for me. I didn't read as many books as I wanted to. Here are my stats. Um, I'm actually pretty pleased with what I read, though, because, as y'all know, my TBR is absolutely insane. So my goal is to get a lot of these physical books out of my house. Um, right now, we are, like, in reconstruction mode. I am trying to, like, do an unhaul and all these different things um, just to, like, make more space. Uh, so I did read a lot of my physical books, books that I've been meaning to get to or books that I've just had for a while. So I'm really excited to share with you what I read in August. Now, I do want to ask y'all, what are you going to read in September? Because I just, I don't know what I'm really gearing towards. Like, I want to read, like, I feel like I do definitely want to stick to my physical TBR, but also, like, am I leaning towards thrillers? Are there some cozy romances that maybe I want to read? I don't know. So let me know down in the comments below what books you're interested in checking out in September. What books are you excited to read? What genres are you going to read? Because I need a little bit of inspiration. I kind of want to do a TBR, but then I'm like, do I want to just go rogue? Because I'm such a mood reader. I don't really know. So let me know what you're excited to read, what you're planning to read. And also, don't forget to let me know what books you enjoyed in August. Because you know I love to read like anything that y'all recommend or whatever. So let's go ahead and get started talking about these books. So to start the month off, again, I was kind of like not stressed. But when the beginning of the school year starts, it's always so hectic. So I really didn't have much time to read. Um, I felt myself being a little slumpy, so I decided to read an Octavia Grant book because y'all know she'd be given like some unhinged like short books at times. So on my Kindle, I definitely like knew I wanted to read an Octavia Grant, but I didn't know which one. So I ended up reading Body Count and oh my gosh, if you're looking for just like a quick like unhinged thriller with like some definite smut and just spicy like good time but also I don't even know just mind-blowing Octavia Grant is definitely the author for you she has become one of my new favorite black authors and I just want to read one of her books every month I haven't read any of her like longer books but I'm definitely excited and I'm definitely willing to try out more of her books because each book just gets like crazier and crazier like as you read it um so I don't want to give too much um information about body count because it is super super short but it's about this girl who basically doesn't care like how many guys she sleeps with doesn't care about breaking up marriages doesn't care about you know, spouses cheating on their, you know, spouses with her. And she doesn't even know how many people she's left with. But as the story unfolds and you get to know more about her, you see that her little messy business is going to catch up with her. And I mean, I thought the last Octavia Grant book was crazy, but this one was even crazier. Five stars. I cannot wait to read more of her books. And if you haven't checked her out yet, what are you waiting on? Next up, I did read like this sample that I got from Book of the Month because it's literally 33 pages. Actually, I cannot remember anything about it. I remember reading it and it was like, okay. So I gave it three stars. The only thing that I can remember about this, y'all, I mean, from page one, pure smut. So, like, I was confused on how they're just giving this away willy-nilly to everybody when it was very, very spicy for 33 pages. Um, so, this one, they're by, like, different authors and such, just, like, little short stories. So, this one's by Abby Jeannie. Yeah, so this one's by Abby Jeannie. It's called A Spell for Disappearing. 
I've never read anything by that author. Um, this one was very fantastical. Uh, so it had a lot of fantasy elements along with the spice. Um, for 33 pages, I think it was fine. I don't know if I could read a whole book with this plot. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Interesting enough. Again, I tried something new. It was short. It was an easy read. Three stars based on just the 33 pages of it. Um, if it was any more than that, it would probably, like, the reading would probably have to go down. It wasn't that intriguing. This book was super, super cute, and it was actually sent to me from Random House Kids. It is super, super, super cute. I love the cover, and I love how inclusive it is. Again, I'm trying to diversify my reads, so I was super excited to get this in the mail. Um, this book is called We Are Big Time, and it's about this girl who is forced well i guess not forced but her family is leaving florida to move to wisconsin um due to her father's job or just a better opportunity for their family ends up going to this bigger school who has a bunch of muslims and she's feeling feeling really good about the school um she decides to join the girls basketball team however the girls basketball team stinks so while she's like excited to be at this huge new school and she's trying to fit in and she's trying to do all these different things, she has to figure out how to make this basketball team a little bit better. And it's just so, so cute. I love the different pictures, the vibrancy, like the inclusiveness, like how different it is from a lot of the books that I read. And I think this is perfect for kids. Um, it was literally just very very heartwarming, easy to read. Again, I love graphic novels and this one is just absolutely stunning. So I definitely recommend this book. Um, I rated it, I think three stars. I definitely enjoyed it. Um, it was a little long, but who cares? It's a graphic novel. So graphic novels, like they don't feel as long as regular books. Um, but this one was just a little bit longer, but again, you're getting into the world, you're getting to know all the characters. It was a good time. I would definitely recommend. I did finish the series and you know that that was my goal like during the summer was to get through these series to get these books off my shelf. So I was really excited to actually read this. So this is the third installment in, I think it's either her Stimulus series or her Love Hypothesis series. Either way, you know what book and what series it is. It's Love Theoretically. And I was so excited to read this. I enjoy this series as a science teacher. It's just so, so fun. And I love the covers. Like, Allie Hazelwood knows how to write a good romance that keeps you intrigued. Um, this book in particular is about this girl named Elsie. Elsie is an adjunct professor, but she also dabbles in, like, fake dating to help her, like, make a little bit more money because her checks are trash. However, the issue with this is both of her worlds kind of come crashing together when she's interested in a new position. So when she's trying to get this new job and, you know, actually start her real career, she actually like meets her favorite client's brother who like obviously recognizes her and he's like, you said you were this and that. And in reality, you're not like you're this super like smart stimulus person and like blah 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 i don't want to give too much away because i felt like you need to go in this book blind i think this book was like my least favorite i don't know i don't know if it's because it's so similar to the other ones or it's just never gonna reach that feeling of the five star that the love hypothesis did the love hypothesis was just so different and refreshing and it was just so new and so now, like, I'm wondering if it's a little bit played out. I'm not exactly sure. This book was fine. I gave it three stars. I just feel like it just didn't give me that five-star feeling. Um, I would definitely recommend it for anybody that's looking for, like, a cozy, cute, like, stimulus, funny book. A um, little bit of em enemies to lovers, but, like, not really because he doesn't really know her. He just thinks that he knows her. But there's like this little like banter going on. It's fun. It just didn't give me the five star feeling that the love hypothesis gave me. Um, but again, good series. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you check it out. I would definitely recommend it. Allie Hazelwood can do no wrong to me. 
But that's until I check out her last two books. Because I have her two books. And I'm a little bit nervous about Bride. So we go see if she does wrong with that. But so far, she hasn't really done wrong. Three stars. Steph, I'm so excited that I finally read this. This book actually came out last year in August. So I'm really behind. But I was always looking into reading it because the cover, stunning. The idea of like the plot and all of that just always stuck out of my head. And that is The Art of Scandal by Regina Black. This book, oh my gosh, y'all. Steamy, like... I don't even know how to explain it. Like, I was getting mad when I was reading it. I was getting emotional. Just It's just such a good book. So it's about this girl named Rachel. Is just this, like, high-class, prestigious black woman who is dating a politician. Um, he's mayor right now, but he's thinking about running for president, and he's actually going to run. But instead, he accidentally <laughs> sends her a peen pic, <laughs> and she knows that it's not for her so she's like who is this for and then come to find out he's cheating on her now he wants to take the house and everything even though that they have a child and she's like uh, i don't know about that so she's willing to stick and ride it out with him to get through this election but in the mix she meets this new guy that she's totally falling for and it's just oh my gosh if you want to read a book about a girl that gets revenge and doesn't mind like sticking it to the bad man and being that good girl that goes bad to give that bad man what he's looking for this is the book for you like i was rooting for her the whole time this book is four stars it's steamy it's sweet like you get to the nitty-gritty of both of the characters like feelings like what they're going through their trauma how they deal with those things and it's just done so well if you haven't read this book i would definitely check it out y'all we have a throwback okay i've had this book since I mean, before I think I started my bookstagram, I have had this book on my shelves for so long and I wanted feel good stories and that's kind of why I went to this book. Um, I wanted nostalgia, so this series definitely brings that for me, but I don't know if it really met the mark. So this is going to be a random, but I read a uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul book, Thinking Positive and Live Happy. I used to read these so much as a kid and I wanted to see if I still felt those feelings. However, they've changed a lot over the years and they used to have like cartoons and all these things. They don't have that anymore. And I'm in a space right now where I need positivity. I need closure in my stories. And these short stories, while they're good and while they're you know, authors that are speaking their truth and they were like decent. This book wasn't what I needed. It has a lot of stories that are really gut-wrenching about cancer, loss, and all these different things. And so for it to be called Think Positively, Live Happy, it wasn't leaving me happy. So I don't know if I'm going to continue. I have another chicken uh, soup for the soul book. Um, I love the idea of them but if you're not in the right headspace I don't know if you should check this out because it did get heavy and like I didn't really feel closure from a lot of the stories so I kind of skimmed through it I got what I needed from it but it just didn't give me the nostalgia and stuff that I needed um so three stars I'm sure this is a perfect book for somebody and maybe it would have been a perfect book for me if I would have been in the right mindset but as of right now, I think that I'm glad that I got it off my shelves, but I don't know if I would pick up another chicken soup uh, book for a long time. So three stars, let's move on. Y'all, and the last book that we read is actually another book that I've had for a minute. And I got it from Walmart. It was like one of those, like I was looking for like an urban romance or like just a black book in general. And it was before I had like gotten into like book talk and booktube and all these different things. Um, and I found this book at Walmart and I picked it up. And little did I know, it's the fifth in the series. So I definitely want to go back and read some of the series. I wish they were on KU. They're not. So I'm going to have to buy them off Amazon. But it is called <laughs> Mistress for Hire. Um, it's not as smutty as it sounds. Like it's smutty, but like not really. Um, if you're looking for a good like urban romance with K 
characters that are flawed. And a character that, I mean, is kind of unlikable. This may be the book for you. I don't really want to tell you too, too much because I don't really know how the series goes. But this one is about this girl who she runs this like mistress company. And very weird that she runs this mistress company because she used to be a mistress. Like she literally messed with one of her best friend's husbands and got pregnant and all this, that, and the third. Um, <laughs> but she makes a lot of money from this mistress company. And then you realize that a lot of what she does is because of what has happened to her in the past. So please, please, please check out Trigger Warnings if you're going to check out this series. Um, I had no idea and it kind of took me off guard. And it's a big part of what makes her her and what's going on with her in this book. Um, the fact that it's the fifth book in the series and there's only six books, shame on me. So if you've read this series, let me know. It is very, very interesting. And I am very proud that I read three black authors this month. And if anything, this just intrigued me to check out a lot more black authors that like you don't really hear about because this author has other books that aren't in this series. So I'm really intrigued to read those as well. But I've read so many authors this month that are just new and refreshing and are so good. I still felt like it was a very, very successful month. I actually read this in like 24 hours. I rated it four stars. It's like pretty, pretty good. And it's pretty short. It's like 200 something pages. So shout out to Walmart <laughs> years ago when they had this. Like, it came in the clutch. Like, this was a good way to end off August. Hey, y'all, those are all the books that I read in August, and I am pretty excited about this. Like, this is a plethora of, like, diverse reads, and I'm so excited and here for it. Suggestions of what I should read in September, leave them down in the comments below. As you can see, I'm open to anything at this point, especially if I already own it. I'm not trying to buy any more books. I I still have books coming in from like publishers and all that. So y'all will be getting another haul soon. But I am very, very pleased that I was able to read all of these different books physically and get them out of my house. So hopefully you had a great reading month in August and I can't wait to hear about your favorite reads. So again, have a great summer and enjoy the end of it because we're going into fall baby the weather's already changing and i'm already feeling the spookiness so let's get out those thriller wrecks and all the cozy comfy reads get out the blankets and all of that and let's enjoy september so until next time make sure you like and subscribe and i'll see you next time bye this video, cause you ain't never talking loud and you know plenty you know what i'm talking about cause you just get me you so